Hi, it's a Shia again. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about our pending Excel spreadsheet. Um, this is the pending Excel spreadsheet can be found in Google Docs. And this is something that you want to have open at all times when you're at work. It's under H4I pending sold and rescinded. So this tab is under pending properties. You always want to have it under pending properties when you're doing the pendings. And this includes short sales as well. So I'm going to be going over what each of these different columns is about, what it'll look like when you have one fully entered, and um, what uh, the difference between a regular pending and a short sale will look like in this Excel. Under column A is agent. Here you're just going to enter the name of the agent that is on our team who is part of this transaction. Um, let's look at number 14 here. Um, this is the agent in this case is Marissa Noppy, so I'm just going to enter her name. And you can look under the H4I pendings, uh, the H4I team um, roster, and that'll show you that Marissa is Marissa is in Bellingham as her head office. So enter Bellingham as her pod location. And then the MLS number, that can be found on the front of the contract. And it's also on the front of a pending, um, pending spreadsheet if it is our seller. Um, and then the address, that can be found everywhere. This is going to be the thing that you refer to most when you are working on a pending um, project. So buyer or seller. This is where you enter whether our client is the buyer or the seller. Occasionally, we represent both the buyer and the seller, as you can see here. They're both represented by Tamara Lamore, um, and they're also unlisted, so NA is under the MLS number. And so you're just going to make two separate lines for the exact same property, represented by the same agent, and then enter buyer and seller in both of them, and then pretty much the same information all the way across. But you just want to make sure that you have two, and then you just simply highlight the two um, from the agent's name to the end of the address, and go up here, click on the borders, and then you click the outer borders, and that totally highlights all the way around it, and that way you can count a little bit easier when you're looking at how many we have pending, because you always subtract one from when you have these two as a dual agent, just because we don't want to double count one property. So going back here to number 14 with Marisa, we've entered that she is representing the seller in this case, and here we represent, we enter the seller and buyer's last names, always in that order. So in this case, Marisa, since she's representing the seller, is representing Trussler, and then Trussler is buying from Patterson. Mutual acceptance date was 11-26-14. Mutual acceptance is just when the last signature is entered in, onto the um, purchase and sale agreement. When that date is finished, that is the mutual date really important to count back different timelines so it's almost always on the pending checklist and you can always check on the contract itself just to double check that um, they're correct if you have a question um, here is where we enter the H4I agent percentages um, in this case it's 50 50 half of the total commission split is going to go to um, the Ben Kinney team the H4I team and half of it is going to go to the agent herself Marisa and then here, uh, I'm going to skip this net commission because we make that at the end. Here is where we enter the sale price. In this case, this property is being sold for $90,000. And then the LOC SOC. This is going to be on the first page of that pending checklist. You can always ask somebody if you don't know what that number is going to be. It's almost always 0.03, but it can change. You can see here it's 0.01. Down here it's 0.025. So that just means that it is 3% um, of the purchase price is going to be given to us in a commission format. Um, so I enter 0.03 because that's 3% in decimal form. And then enter here. You can see up here in the corner that that is in the form of a uh, an equation. Um, and so it's just saying that um, this cell equals J14, which is this one, J14, our purchase price, is multiplied by the LOC or the SOC, the 
listing office commission or the selling office commission, whichever one we're going here. And in this case, it's the listing office commission because it's our seller. So that's, we take the $90,000 purchase price, multiply it by 3%, and that gives us our total commission. And that's $27,000. And that's just our initial um, best estimate of what that's gonna be. It's gonna change over time as we get um, commission disbursements potentially. Um, so we just enter this when we're first entering. And that's the, the easiest way to do that is to either just push enter um, and then this cell times this cell and then press enter and then it gives you that 27,000. Or you can click on the one above if it has the same um, equation that you want. And you can click on this little um, square here and it turns into a plus sign and then click and drag and it'll just copy the equation from this cell into this cell and voila it works so then we come back here to the h4i net commission and you can see that's a lot smaller than any <laughs> than either of these two numbers but in this case um, it looks like we've already received our disbursement authorization the first one at least and so that'll give us a, a different number that's going to have some sort of wacky symbol to it. Um, but if we didn't have it already, then what we would do is take this number, the total gross, the gross commission, and multiply it by however much we, on the first half here, H4I, we always consider ourselves H4I for this sort of interaction. Um, we multiply it by the uh, decimal of this. So let me re-explain myself. What I would be doing if this was, if I didn't have a disbursement authorization in the first place, so when I'm first entering this into Excel as my first task on a brevity checklist, as I go here, I take this 2700 and I divide it by two because there are two equal parts. And then I enter that number into the H4I net commission. Then for a regular pending, we skip status and sale type. We just leave those plain old length. Then we go over here to column O, that's escrow office. In this case, you can click here and you can see the full name up here in the equation um, box, or you can click on it itself and it'll show you. Um, this is CW title and Catherine Watkins is our closer. So that's who we're gonna be talking to for all of this stuff or her assistant. And of course you can find the list of everybody and their assistants and their associated companies inside of Google Docs, again, if you need that information. Or you can always just contact the closer themselves, but usually they prefer it if you talk to their assistant because everybody's really swamped, so it's best if you can talk to an assistant. Then here, lender. In this case, it's owner financed, which means that the person who's selling is going to let the person who's buying borrow the money from them. But if we look down here, cobalt, that just means that the lender company, the mortgage company, is cobalt and the lender loan officer's name is Dustin. So I just do that, and that's who I'm gonna be sending the first purchase and sale agreement to, and um, if there's any changes or you need to talk to them, you can always refer back here to see who it is, and that's gonna be found on the front of your checklist, and that's the only place where you're gonna find it, if um, who the name of the company is and who the name of the lender is. So you can always ask the agent if they didn't tell you. And then source, they'll tell you this also, or you can go into Boomtown and look at that, not in the pending manual again. And in this case, um, it looks like it was an expired call that Marisa had made to the seller to ask them um, if they wanted to go ahead and sell their house again. It looks like they did. So her source is expired. And that's always really important to have the exact source. Closing date. This is the estimated closing date. It's just saying that they, are, they want to close on December 15th. And so when that date comes up, it'll be moved all the way up to the front um, along with anything else that's closing on the 15th, which in this case, we have one below that is being closed on the 15th. And so when that time comes, then we're gonna email the escrow agent and the agent herself and ask them if it has closed and if so, final HUD. Um, and that's again in the manual. Short sale expiration date, since it's not a short sale, we just use the little squiggly key. This is if we're missing any documentation for this file. In this case, it looks like we're missing a 35R, whether it's approved or rejected. And so I can just go ahead and email Marisa and ask her if she has that 35R. Or look and see if it's already in the loop, because sometimes people like to upload stuff to the loop, and it doesn't come to you for whatever reason, or you just forget to delete it from missing. 
Um, this is date of update. This means that on the 11th, which happens to be today, um, I did something to this call to this row of the spreadsheet. So if I look here, I can see exactly what I did. Um, today, 12-11, I updated commissions. And so that just means that I went over to over here and I um, updated the things from the DA because I got a uh, initial DA. Here, um, I put X marks when I have these corresponding documents, the EMR, the earnest money receipt. I usually receive that two or three days after I receive the pending checklist from escrow. Legal, this is whether I have the legal description, also known as Exhibit A, in the file. And they have to have that. It doesn't have to be signed, but it's best if it is. This is Form 17, also known as a seller's disclosure. And like I say in the pending manual, that just explains to the potential buyer what things are wrong with the property, if they know of anything that's wrong, or any other material facts that are important to the purchase. And so because I have X's in all of these, that lets me know that I have all three of these documents. And then this one is blank for the 35R, and that means that I still need to get a 35R for my agent. And I have also written 35R here for easy reference. Because sometimes I have to add other things, like an extension, things that aren't listed in this checkbox. Um, in this case, this property, I need to get an extension for their closing. Or here, I haven't gotten a checklist from the agent. Or here, I haven't gotten a rescission. Anyways, so if I had just created um, this, uh, this um, row on my spreadsheet, I would just highlight all of these from O to Q. I would highlight them. Then I go up to the paint box and I fill it in in bright yellow. And I leave that filled in in bright yellow. Um, and make sure that this part is always in this weird teal color. <laughs> and everything over here is always just plain white. And each day um, things get moved up as they are closing. And then I keep everything in light blue that I've already talked to escrow to ask the final HUD for. And then I highlight anything in this, in a darker blue color, just to let myself know that this, these things should be closing that day. And then I can check off and I can just click here and turn it into the light blue because I've already asked Esther and I can go down in case I get distracted and somebody wants to talk to me about something else so I don't forget and I don't have to have a big pile of papers. Farther below, down here, you can see that all of these, oh, so let me explain. All of these up here are regular pendings, as you know. None of these are short sales, and they're all ordered by closing date. And so if I got a pending tomorrow that is going to be closing on 12-24, um, I just go over here to in between the 12-23 and 12-26, and I right-click, and then I insert one above or below, whatever is necessary, and that'll create a blank row, and I can just go ahead and fill that in like I just explained. So we go down farther here, and here, um, these are all of our short sales. It's exactly the same as before, except for with the status and the sale type, those are different. Status, I leave blank at the beginning until something is accepted, also known as approved. And that just means that the lien holder has accepted the offer of sale, and the agent, him or herself, will tell you that. This is KW or X. KW um, or X, I just leave blank at the beginning too. Um, everything is the same. And then under closing date, because a short sale doesn't have a set closing date, um, you write down how many days after lien holder approval um, it will be closing. So 30 days, 20 days, usually it's 30 days, but as you can see, it's really, really variable. Short sale expiration date, sometimes they have those, sometimes they don't have them on there. It's not super important. And then everything over here. Um, these take a really, really long time, so we don't, like, keep them in closing date, closing order, besides not being able to have them in closing order. So, uh, this is a, these are the sort of things that we, it takes a really, really long time for them to be caught up. And we also don't receive the EMR, usually, until we've gotten approval. So, that is that for the pending and Excel spreadsheet. Thank you.